When we moved in, the lounge was quite high up on the list of rooms that were going to present more challenges than others. The reason is, some of the beams are absolutely full of rot and woodworm. This door support, for instance, stops a good half metre from the floor. The chimney breast is full of cracks, the mantelpiece is sagging and it's basically collapsing in front of our eyes. There was black mould on the wall and even though we've removed the cement it's still taking weeks to dry out. The lintel below the window is cracked and the same again for the one above meaning the window doesn't open and close. There's nearly 150 metres of electrical cable to be hidden in secret channels in the bricks and stone walls. 7 metres of chimney liner needs reinstalling. The fire surround needs stripping back with dangerous hydrochloric acid. Doors need lead paint stripping. The walls need re-lime mortaring. These beams have obviously got some huge cracks in them. We think a couple of them might even have woodworm. But until we get all this really thick soot and ash off of them, we could be walking into a complete nightmare. Our ceiling is presenting us quite a problem. Now these beams here, Mandy's taken caustic soda and bleach to them. And they've come up quite well. But the problem is, the beams over by the fireplace are very black. And they're... It's going to take several coats to get them to come up, like these ones over here. But the problem is, when you apply the wood hardener, that makes them go black or blacker. And then when you apply the um, woodworm treater treatment, they go black again. And then when you apply the uh, Lindsay Doyle, they go slightly darker again. So they might end up a similar shade to when we started. So, if we got the ladder, I took a wire brush to this bit up here and it came up very light. Now, if we apply the three treatments, we might end up with a lighter shade. So, I don't know, but that's my next plan. cleaned up half of the first beam and I think the local farmer is right it's not chestnut it's light oak so there we go he's cleaned up a tree you can see the color difference and it's quite well it's epic it really isn't it look at that it has come up really clean I'm quite well I'm chuffed normally this room smells very strongly of damp but when I came down this morning I've cleaned what one two three four beams and it smells very strongly of ash now. And also, if I show you here on the floor, there's a piece of wallpaper and it is stained very strongly with nicotine. So we reckon this piece of wallpaper is probably what, from the 1940s, 1950s, I think. So yeah, the people who lived in this room were probably very strong smokers as well. And it's a bit, well, sticky so yeah so I wouldn't want to have lived in this room particularly all that smoke and all that nicotine yeah not a very nice place to live sanding the oak beams is actually very hard on these flap sanding discs because what it's doing is leaving a black sooty tar residue on the discs and that in turn leaves a sticky mess on the the oak beams and it's not leaving the beams very clean so yeah the the residue might actually be either nicotine or it might be um just tar from the soot itself 
but it doesn't leave the beams very clean and we want a very sort of like light oak finish so yeah you have to change these flap sanding discs quite res regularly and uh yeah the these discs are still perfectly good for say sanding metal or something like that but yeah they're useless after just a few minutes before i clean the soot off i was very worried about some of these cracks in the beams as you can see there's a fairly long one but now you can see they're just basically the oak beams drying in time and also i was worried about some of the wood burn holes but as you can see there's a little bit of wood burn there but it's all old and pretty inactive so we are going to treat the beams but i don't think there's anything to worry about really yeah it's all pretty old and inactive oh crikey i'm in trouble what's basically happened is all the dust from where i've been sanding the beams downstairs has come up between all the gaps in the floorboard and left mandy's lovely waxed bedroom floor completely dusty and a complete mess so unless i get this cleared up too sweet i'm in a lot of trouble raking out the wall here and there's remove that bit there's a big hole here and it looks yeah. like that was maybe the lintel a couple of uprights there it's right next door to the front door isn't it it's between the front door and the window and we've been in our neighbor's house and they have like a round window there yeah and i'm wondering whether because they were built roughly about the same time and I'm wondering, Less than 10 years apart. Mm, and I'm wondering whether, because if you look at that, I don't know whether you can make out the top in there, but there's like a, a proper top all the way through. Oh yeah, there's another lintel stone on the outside. And I'm wondering whether this is an old window that goes all the way through. Yeah. Now, a couple of questions. Do we want a window? I think it'd be a cool feature. It'd be fantastic to have a look. I mean, it's not going to take, looking at the rubble that's in there, it is... It's like loose plaster. Yeah. There's a brick in there. I can see another stone in there. Um, it might be worth our while just emptying it out. Because I don't think it's going to collapse. No. Looking at the stones in there. And uh, Yeah, let's have a look, shall we? Yeah. Although I don't want to break through just at the moment. Because no, we're, we're left with a big hole. In yeah, we're going to be left. House. Yeah, we're going to be left with a big hole. But if we... If we empty that bit out... Yeah. And then leave the front bit as is at the moment. Yeah. So we mortar around this hole for now Ooh. and leave the outside for a while until we get round to the outside. And then we can knock it through maybe. And yeah. If, even if we just put like a, a bit of wood or something there. Yeah. Temporarily. I, mean, that, I, think it's, I, think, I mean, that's cracked, but even that yeah. is just... I mean, a lot of these stones, I mean, this one's got a crack oh, in it yeah yeah there's a huge crack there yeah so i mean oh. that one's got a crack in it there yeah. so yeah i mean oh. quite a few of these have got cracks in them Am I right? yeah <laughs> yeah yeah oh, i mean that's that's fantastic isn't it yeah i mean what what are they called the the fisherman's Wives, wives windows or something like that are they i think they're normally lower down they're normally de low down with a little sink aren't they yeah so there's no sign of a sort of no, any that, that sink. No, that all looks like solid stone there. And yeah. That, I, I should have taken I think it's like a little spy hole to see who's at the front door. Because, mm. I mean, our front door definitely isn't original, is it? I mean, that's probably 1950s or something like that, isn't it? Well, it looks like it's three million years old, actually. Yeah, but that's because it's, it's knackered. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, how cool is that? Yeah. Definitely a cool little discovery. Yeah. Yeah, let's keep it. So this bit is a nightmare. It's concrete and tile adhesive, which they used around the whole bottom of the room. And at the moment, I'm trying to chip the concrete off, but trying to figure out what's the concrete and what are the stones is tricky because it all looks the same to start with. But as you can see there, I'm, I'm 
I'm winning, I think. But it is literally a long slog. It's it's going to take me hours. And uh, I've got this chunk here still to do, which is the, the concrete. But like I say, there's the stone. Ah, oh, wish me luck. <laughs> This beam up here was covered in what we think was bright pink lead paint, several layers of it, and it's cleaned up, and we think it's probably oak. So yeah, it's come up quite well. There's several large cracks in it, well, huge cracks in it actually, so, but yeah, it's come up a tree. Between the pair of us, there's about another 80 hours of labour done in this room and the beams are looking an awful lot lighter. They really brighten up the room. However, it's still quite a dark room, so we're going to go for these Tiffany wall lights and a pair of matching Tiffany chandeliers. There just isn't enough light coming in and as I'm already in trouble for creating a lot of dust upstairs, I decided to open up the doorway and... What's going in these two holes is a couple of stained glass windows. I've widened the doorway and Mandy doesn't dislike it, so I'm taking that as a win. The only problem is this wall now has the structural integrity of tissue paper, so I don't know quite what I'm going to do with it. I probably should take down the whole wall now and replace it with something like a stud wall, because yeah, if I sneeze, the whole thing's probably going to fall down. I bought the first one of these English rose stained glass panels for about four quid 20 years ago. And then a couple of years later, I saw another in a car boot sale for three quid, slightly damaged. I thought, that's a bit weird, so I bought it. And then, I uh, don't know, 20 years later, I saw a pair online, slightly taller, and they were, I think they were about 10 or 15 quid. And it was at about that point I realised, yeah, they're probably, I don't know, 1990s reproduction. So there you go. Yeah, we're putting those in. First one done. Only another million to do. Yeah, only another 22 to go. Trouble is as well, they're so, the, the well, beams yeah, are so hard. we were worried about hookworm, but um, when we tried to nail them up, it just bent the nails. So we're screwing them up. <laughs> and it's yeah. tough going, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah, these these beams are literally, well, they're harder than steel, really, aren't they? Yeah. So there's absolutely no chance of um, them breaking. Yeah, I'm struggling a bit with the beams. Yeah. I do as much as I can, and then you have to rescue me. <laughs> this one is um, slightly darker oak to these ones, so these ones might have been replaced at some point. So, yeah, this is... Um, this is and the ones at the side here, I don't know if you can see here, here these are a darker oak as well. So, um, yeah, these, these ones sitting on top are a much lighter um, shade of oak. But this beam here 
is absolutely like steel. And um, you know, getting a nail to go in these beams was impossible. So we're uh, we're having to screw the beams, um, screw the uh, battens on. Whoever fitted these windows did an absolute terrible job. There's what a centimeter, two centimeter gap going through to the outside. Yeah, that's where all the insects have been coming in. Bees, hornets, lizards, all sorts. We said to our neighbours that we could have this room done in four weeks. Absolutely no problem. The royal week. The royal week. Yeah, it wouldn't be a problem. Five weeks later? Yeah. We've, we've got the destruction phase. The, the demolition phase. phase is, is done. Nearly. Ish. Perhaps. Perhaps. Um, but yeah, it's done. It's done. We've decided it's yeah. done. For now. For now. For now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so now we've, we've finished demolishing, now we can start pimping. Pimp, yeah. Is that the right word? Pimp. Pimp, yeah. <laughs> Building so, it up. Making it look good. Yeah. So, yeah. So, anything from now on can, can only be improved. It can only in, be an improvement. Yeah, we've yeah. got to do the ceiling. Um, we got to talk, like, do the boarding on the ceiling. So woodworm the beams first. Yeah. Um, we've just put the battens up. Yeah, so um, they've all got to be treated. All the uh, the beams for the walls, they've got to be all, treated. All the wood in here will treat. Then we've got to uh, um, do all the line rendering on the walls. Insulation and plasterboard on the ceiling. Yeah, so that'll keep all the heat in for winter because that's basically why we're doing this room because yeah. um, last year was pretty cold. A little bit cool. Because basically the summer months are uh, like a couple of months longer than England. Yeah. But it gets rather cold, rather quick. Yes, it was like five yeah. five degrees when you came down in the morning. And yeah. With no central heat in it. it yeah. It was a little bit. Maybe. We went away somewhere for like a, a, a long weekend and we came back and it was so cold the telly wouldn't turn on, the laptop turn, wouldn't turn on, the my mobile phone wouldn't turn on, so we had to have the heater on for several hours before yeah. the electronics in the house would turn on. So yeah, that's how cold it got. So so this year we're going to be snug. We're going to be a lot snugger with the big fire and yeah. stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. So um, yeah. So onwards and upwards, really, for this room. Everything, yeah, and everything from now on can only be an improvement. So that's the plan. We yeah. hope. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what we're kidding ourselves. We're not kidding ourselves, we're just... Yeah. We're great. Can we give ourselves another four weeks to get it done? Mm -hmm. We're now October, the middle of October, 13th. Yeah. So, middle of November, it will be done. Yes, ish. <laughs> Don't hold us to that. Perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> Might be done before then. Might be done before then. Let's face it. Ceiling, that's a week, that's a week. Yeah. Yeah. I'd just be happy if the rest of the house isn't covered in brick dust and sand. Oh, God, yeah. So, yeah. That would be a, a miracle. Yeah. So, as usual, folks, give us a bit of a like and subscribe. That's that. I'd love a bit of that. And um, we'll see you soon. Au revoir. Au revoir.